A lot of people are asking, how is 4K video going to work on the web? How is it going to work? H.265, it's a new codec, and we're going to explain that to you in just a second. This episode of Techzilla is brought to you by Lumosity. Techzilla Bytes, feed your tech hunger fast. I'm Patrick Norton, and this is Tom Vaughn from Multicore Wear. What's the simplest way to explain H.265? I mean, it's the codec that's going to make everything fit on the internet. Uh, that's right. Uh, over the past eight years, the video experts of the world have been getting together with the Motion Picture Experts Group, or MPEG, and the ITU, and this joint video task force has been developing the next generation standard. And so they've had dozens and dozens, hundreds and hundreds of proposals to figure out how to encode video more efficiently. And finally, last January, they ratified the first generation of the H.265 specification. And so now we can encode video 35 to 50 percent more efficiently. So when you say 35 or 50 percent more efficiently, you know, Amazon Prime, Netflix, Vudu, whoever it is, they use the H.265 codec. Does that mean a 4K stream is going to fit where a 1080p stream fits now? Uh, more or less, yeah. Uh, we can achieve remarkable 4K video quality at, at bit rates of like 10 to 15 megabits per second. So at MultiCoreWare, you guys work on the tools for encoding or the tools for? That's right. We have both an HEVC encoder and decoder. Um, we started this year the X265 HEVC open source encoder project, and we had a very large team on that uh, combined with some open source uh, developers, and uh, the project's going fantastic. So the, the, the original spec for encoding H.265, it comes out, it, you said it took a minute to encode a single frame of video? That's right, the reference encoder that was point, put out by this joint video task force um, took a minute on a dual core, 16 core server to encode one frame of 1080p video, and now we can do 30 frames per second on that same server. So how does H.265 compress video so much more efficiently? Well, there's two parts to it. First, you do what's called motion estimation. So that's where you break up the video frame into little blocks. Um, they were called macro blocks in H.264, now they're called coding units. And uh, we could have up to 64 by 64 pixel blocks of video. And we look at this frame of video and find, search the previous frames or subsequent frames to find a section that is as close a match as possible. And so basically, as the camera is moving, you know, this frame of video is usually very similar to the, to the previous one. And, and we can make those references and just say, it's the same as this, only it's moved this far in this direction. So the block units were much smaller in terms of pixel size than the CUs that are in H.265. Um, does this increase the encoding time considerably over H.264? Well, in general, it's 5 to 10x more computationally intensive. So yes, it's a, it's a more complex codec. We don't get all that additional efficiency for free. Um, so that's the challenge. That's where MultiCoreWare's team of uh, high performance computing experts has figured out how to parallelize those operations and how to really accelerate those operations using different types of computing devices like GPUs. So in terms of at the receiving end, I'm decoding and putting it up on my screen. What's the performance hit compared to H.264? Well, it's, it's fantastic. Um, you know, today we're getting uh, real-time encoding on a high-end machine, but we're, we continue to optimize, and you'll see continued performance improvements. Uh, but the difference in visual quality is just stunning. At any constrained bit rate, uh, it's it's night and day different, and you're definitely want to going to want to go for HEVC. So the only downside, though, is that if I have an Apple TV or a Roku 3, I'm probably not going to be able to download H.265 and start running it. It's probably going to be a hardware upgrade. That's true. For those types of devices, they use fixed function hardware decoders, and today they have H.264 decoders. Um, but all the companies around here at CES are working hard to bring uh, their gear up to date, and HEVC hardware decoders will proliferate in 2014. So by the end of 2014, we expect most mobile devices to have an HEVC decoder, and those connected home uh, set-tops, uh, like you know the ones you mentioned, uh, We'll, we'll certainly at some point go to HEVC. H.265 coming this year? Absolutely, it's here now. You can uh, go to x265.org and uh, we have a Bitbucket site where the open source code is available and developers can uh, take advantage of this right now. Tom, thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, you want to learn more about MultiCoreWare, go to MultiCoreWare Inc. I got to thank you for watching. Techzilla.com is a website, youtube.com slash techzilla if you want to subscribe on YouTube. HD Nation is a great place to find more about home theater gear. That's youtube.com slash HD Nation or revision3.com slash HD Nation. And I am out. I got to go find more cool stuff at CES 2014. Thank you for watching. And Tom, thank you again. Thanks. Do you want to improve your brain performance and live a better life? 
any brain can get better, and Lumosity makes it easy and fun with games based on neuroscience. Lumosity is like a personal trainer for your brain that lets you build your own customized training program to enhance your memory and attention. Plus, you get detailed training summaries and stats to keep track of your progress and to see where you need to improve. Over 40 million users have already experienced Lumosity's breakthrough brain training. What are you waiting for? Start training with Lumosity right now and discover what your brain can do. Check out lumosity.com slash techzilla to get instant access and help support the show.